All right, here's our first question, or one of the questions we're going to work on. Uh, this, uh, well, let's just set it up and we'll figure out what kind of question it is, but this is an old kind of bike light that used to be pretty common. I had seen some before, but I don't know if you've seen it before. It doesn't matter. We're going to do it anyways. So you might think, hey, I didn't have enough time to write this problem down. Ah, too bad. Um, the good news is I've posted this on the announcements for this class, so uh, you can find it there. We're going to just jump right into it, though, and start on part A. So for part A, uh, we want to find what mass of the ethylene can be produced. Well, hey, in starting with equal amount of reactants. So I think an important thing is to write down the reaction. That's CAC2. Uh, we find out that that's a solid, and then we have, uh, it reacts with water, reacts with water to form H2O, and uh, let's see, it has some products, the C2H2, it says, and calcium hydroxide, this is a gas, we have calcium hydroxide 2 and this is aqueous you can check that out and your solubility rules so there's the reaction let's write down uh, under it what we know so there's equal amounts of each and I say that's 1 times 10 to the 2 or 100 grams of each okay well and I want to know the mass of ethylene. Because this is a problem that has two pieces of information specified, uh, and I want to find a third, uh, this is over-specified, too much information, this is called the limiting reactant problem that we talked about before. So I'm actually going to do two stoichiometry problems right now. Uh, find the, num the one that gives me the small amount of ethylene, that's my limiting reactant, that's my answer. So, let's start with CAC2 first, and there's 100 grams of that, of the CAC2. need to change that to moles, because I need to go to moles so I can use a molar ratio and find the mass of the C2H2. So let's do that. That's 64.10 grams per mole. That's moles of CAC2. Uh, and then I need my molar ratio. I better double check that this is balanced. It's not quite. I think I need a 2 right here, and that'll do it. Okay, that looks good. So now I know I have 1 mole of C2H2 for every 1 mole of CaC2. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm at moles of ethylene. I want mass, so there's... Uh, one potential more step, I'm just going to do this one a little different than what you've seen before. I'm actually going to stop here so that you can see there's a different way to do it in that. You can stop at moles or mass when you do a limiting reactant problem. So just so you see something different, I didn't have to do this, I could have gone to mass, but just for fun we're going to stop for moles here so you can see a slightly different way of approaching the problem. Okay, that's the CA C2. Now let's move on to the water. That one's also specified at 100 grams. I want to change that to moles. So it's from the periodic table, 18.02 grams per mole. And there's two moles of water. Oh, two, uh, one mole. I need to put water at the bottom. One mole of C2H2 for every two moles of water on the bottom, not the top goes on the bottom because I want it to cancel out whatever I want should go on the top. Okay. So there's water. I, again, I'm stopping at moles just to do something different like the above one. So you can see it works if you do it this way too. Moles. Now, you look at both your answers. These are both moles of C2H2. You see that this one's a smaller number. That means that CaC2 is the limiting reactant, and this is my answer. 1.56 moles is what's produced. 
I didn't want moles though, I actually wanted mass. So I'll take one more step, 1.56 moles of C2H2. Let's just convert that to mass. So here you see, in contrast to last time we did one of these problems, I'm uh, doing mass as the last step. And from the periodic table, it's 26.04 grams per mole. That'll turn out to be 40.6 grams. And there's my answer to part A, which uh, stated what mass of ethylene can be produced. I also happen to find my limiting reactant, a CA. C2. So let's look at part B. What does part B ask for? What mass of excess reactant remains after the reaction is complete? This is the tougher sort of question that you can get. How much leftover water do I have? Remember, it's in excess, so I'm going to have some leftover amount. It's not going to use all 100 grams. It's going to use less than 100 grams. So let's try part B. What you do is you start out with what you just calculated. That's 1.56 moles of the ethylene. And if you had mass, you change the moles first. But after going to moles, then find the moles of the excess reagent. So there's two moles of water for every one mole of the ethylene. So this is my molar ratio converting from uh, moles of C2H2 to moles of water. And then, now I have moles of water, I want to change that to mass of water. So from the periodic table, 18.02 grams per mole. That turns out to be, let's see, that's 56.2 grams of water. I should, uh, oh, well, I'll just underline it for now. That is the mass of water I actually used. Remember, I started with 100, and what I did is I found the amount of ethylene I actually produced and back calculated the amount that I actually used of water. So find the amount remaining, should know that the amount used plus the amount remaining, which is this, uh, equals the total of 100. Or kind of working the other way, 100 which is the total, minus the 56.2 grams, which is the amount used, will leave me with the amount remaining, which is 43.8 grams of water. That's how much water is unused, okay, or remaining. Let's circle that one. That's my answer to part B, 43.8. Now, let's take a look at part C. Part C, it says only 29.9 grams of ethylene is collected. What is the percent yield? And we haven't done a practice on this yet, but we'll do it right now. So, how you do these, and this, let's see, that was part C. For part C, percent yield is actual over theoretical times 100. If you don't remember what those are, actual is uh, what you're given. It's the experimental. So that's the amount we're given. That was 29.9. Theoretical is what you calculated. It's from your calculator, from your calculations. We calculated uh, in, uh, let's see, part A that that was 40.6. That's the grams of ethylene that should have been produced, but you see, maybe through side reaction, experiment, or error, whatever, we only got 29.9. Well, multiply this by 100%, and we turn out to get 73.6% yield. So that's the yield in this reaction that actually occurred in lab. Again, we should have got 40.6, but for whatever reason, we got less. Okay, and there's our limiting reactant problem. We found, we began by finding how much was actually produced for the overspecified situation. Then we found out, okay, how much in excess reactant was left over. 
and finally the percent yield.